Hi class, um, I am here on Heron Island on the Great Barrier Reef off the coast of Australia. I'm here with Dr. Elizabeth Perkins, um, Hi. <laughs> who is the, uh, the director of the Heron Island Research Station out at the University of Queensland. And um, I just wanted to, we were, I happened to be in, in town and I thought I'd say hello. Um, what I wanted to do was just ask her a few questions relevant to the topics of the class. Um, so um, Liz, if I may, um, mm. would you be willing to um, tell the class a little bit about, um, you know, you've been here for five years have, uh, yeah. at the station yep. and um, you're a scientist and so mm -hmm. you have a background that might have some uh, awareness of some of the broader issues at hand. Mm -hmm. Would you be willing to tell the class a little bit about how the reef and this particular ecosystem um, has changed? And yeah. sort of, if you can t tie that, if there is a tie to um, global climate change or ocean acidification, that would certainly be relevant as well. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I've, I've been on Heron Island for about five years now. So I've, yeah, been, spent a lot of time on the reef and um, the research station here does a lot of different um, climate change work. <laughs> Researchers walking around all around us. Um, <laughs> So the research station has a lot of climate change research occurring on it, so a lot of concerns about ocean acidification. Um, and this year there's there's talk of a big um, coral bleaching event occurring on the Great Barrier Reef, so we've got a lot of researchers who are really interested in whether that's going to occur and, and studying and filming that as well. I had read about that, that it was mm. supposed to happen in January, and so we were worried it was going to happen before we got here, but it, yeah. the coral seems like it, I mean, I don't, I don't know how it was. So because we're, ago, we're on the, the southern end of the Great Barrier Reef, we would expect it to occur, occur a little bit later okay. um, here because we get our warmest temperatures right at the end of summer. Okay. So um, we will have people coming in in the next sort of month to, to well, uh, as, as bad as it sounds, they're hoping to see the coral bleaching right, event sure. and, and document it. So um, I guess for me what I've seen, I mean, we've probably experienced a lot more severe storms here so obviously we are in a, in a cyclone location so um, last year we had some really severe cyclone events um, which is obviously very damaging for the reef um, yeah so it's it's we, we do see a lot of different things and obviously we're concerned about the bleaching event yeah yeah, yeah. and um, could you tell me a little bit about why does coral bleaching happen what is what happens when coral gets bleached? Um, it's really a, a stress reaction. So if um, temperatures become too high or the coral um, gets into a situation where it's very stressed, uh, they the bleaching is um, actually where they release their symbiotic algae. So they have a, an algae associated with coral which creates their colour and that algae gets released and that's when the coral becomes that bright white colour. Um, and corals can recover from that, um, but they can also die and, um, and obviously once they die, the structure of them decays and, and you lose everything really yeah okay um well thank you for that and i was wondering <laughs> could you also tell us a little bit about since the focus of the course is global yeah. disruption and information technology yeah. could you tell us a little bit about the it that supports this station and and yeah. how you use it and if you if you have thoughts on future it systems that might be of use that would be great as well but yeah um yeah um obviously well, we're a remote location so and our central campus is located in brisbane so it's about six hours away from us and so we need to keep connected so um we have a in the last few years, um, we've created a really great internet connection so that for me as a manager, I need to talk to my managers down in Brisbane. So there's a lot of um, Skype conference calling and, and really for our researchers, they can't be away from, from civilization. They need some connection back. So, you know, researchers are, are Skyping in for meetings and, and sometimes giving lectures and things online and, and um, on, over Skype as well. So there's a lot of, um, IT is really important for us for, for that connection back to the mainland, back to our main campus and for, for our professors and our academics yeah, yeah. being able to connect back with their students while they're here and, um, and you know, hopefully um, as we move forward we might be, you know, able to create content online that people can view and um, that would be something really exciting for the future. Fantastic. And so that behind you I think up there, let's see if I can get it in, in the frame. Um, where is it? There's a big tower. <laughs> Uh, is it in frame? No, I don't know. Anyway, somewhere over there, there is a white tower, or a tower with some white dishes. That, that is a, a microwave link back to the mainland. Yeah. Um, and that is how they have uh, faster internet than at the place we're staying across the way, where you get 24 hours worth of internet and it drops you off every three minutes. Um, so, um, and behind us we have, uh, this is an experiment, let, let me see, you told me about this experiment, let me see if I can replicate it. Um, so this is an experiment where each one of these has a little, um, a, a miniature reef in it, effectively, and they're piping different kinds of water, um, where they've manipulated the temperature and the um, partial pressure of CO2, is that what? Okay. Um, the partial pressure of CO2 in the different tanks to see what effect it has, and so they have some tanks that are 
based on pre-industrial conditions, others that are based on business as usual going forward. Um, and apparently, we, we, can't, we can't quite peek in some of them because they're, they're in progress, but um, the ones that are um, business as usual are effectively sort of turning down into piles of rubble and the ones that are pre-industrial, these big flourishing reefs, um, which is a bummer, unfortunately. <laughs> but um, I guess that's one of the important reasons to have science like this is so we can actually know what would happen under various different circumstances. And so, um, so yeah, with that, I'd, I'd just like to say um, thank you very much, Liz. It was a, a pleasure you. chatting with you. Thank yeah. you for showing me around. And uh, thanks for giving a guest lecture to our class. No worries. I, right. hope, I hope it was great. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. <laughs>